Hi everyone, Ian here. The rectangle pattern shape can be used to create ring charts and pie charts, and bar charts and stacked bar charts, but it can also be used to create some fun looking FUI widgets. And in this video, I'm going to show you how it works. So in a new scene, I'm going to open the quick add window by hitting the plus in the scene window, and I'm going to type in rect. I'm going to hit enter to create a rectangle pattern shape, and over in the attribute editor, you'll notice that there's a pattern mode. This can be line or it can be ring. Let's have a look at line first. So by default, we have this use fixed size checkbox turned on. This means that the pattern is going to be the size that's in this attribute called size, interestingly enough. So we can set the width and we can set the height in here. And if we turn this off, then the size is going to be the count times the bar size. So if I increase the count, then the width gets larger. However, if I have use fixed size turn on and I increase the count, notice how the bars get thinner because everything's been squashed to fit into that fixed size. Okay, so next we have gap type. Now to demonstrate gap type, I'm actually going to make sure each of these bars gets a different color. So to do that, I need to add a submesh behavior. So let's just go and add one of those. Then on the submesh, I'm going to go over to the fill tab. I'm going to hit replace fill. And then I'm going to create an array from palettes with a library palette. You can choose whatever you want. I'll choose this one. And then with that created, I'm going to connect the output from this color array. I'm going to connect that into the fill color just by dragging like that. And that gives each one of these bars a different color. Okay, that's great. Now we can get back to what we were doing. So here's the gap type is alternating. And what that means is that every other bar is a gap. So every other one has basically been turned off, which is creating these gaps. Okay. If I turn this to none, then that means that all of the bars are going to show. And if I change this to fixed width, it's kind of the same as none, only there's a fixed width gap being put in between each of the rectangles. And you notice how everything got a little bit wider and we can change that fixed width if we want to. Of course, we can turn use fixed size on, which will squash everything back down again, like so. Or we can set none as the gap type. Okay, let's make this a bit bigger just to make it slightly easier to see. Okay, where does the fun start? I hear you ask. Okay, so the fun is with this bar size. And if I right click on this bar size and I go add behavior, I'm gonna add a noise in here. And then if I just hit play, then you'll immediately see that we have a pretty cool effect going on. And if I change the gap type to alternating, then we're gonna end up with some very wide gaps and some very wide shapes. And then if I choose fixed width gaps, then you get the expected result, which is little gaps between each of the rectangles. And I'm going to turn off fixed width as well. And you can see that basically we've got this very thin shape down here. That's because the fixed width is turned off. So we're not normalizing all of these sizes into the size of the pattern, which was set here. And instead what we'll be using is the settings that are on this uh, noise behavior. So we've got a size of minus 10 to 10. Well, we can't have a shape that's minus 10, it just won't exist. So we can actually set this to something like zero and then we can set a maximum size of say, something higher, 80 pixels or something like that. And then you get this kind of an effect. So notice how the width is changing and that's again because this fixed width is turned off. So this is something that you only get with a rectangle pattern because in the ring pattern, obviously we have a fixed angle of 360 degrees that we can't go outside of. So this is just something to be aware of when working with the rectangle pattern in line mode. So again, if I turn on use fixed size, I can squash all these things down or stretch them out as I would like. Okay, so that's basically what we've got going on with the line mode. So if I change this over to the ring, here's what we've got. Again, I'll just hit play. We can just carry on looking at this. I can set this from alternating a gap type to say none. And this is the result I get. So something actually I should point out with line, I've just noticed that this might need explaining why you can see two next to each other when there's a gap everywhere else. And that's because there's an odd numbering count. If I change this to say 36, you won't get two next to each other at the start and end point. Same if I, if I move over to, to line. So on this line, we've got a fixed size here, but if I, if I change this to say 37, you see how everything, how it looked like it increased in width. Well, it didn't actually increase in width. What happened was, the, there was a gap at the end and the gap was just turned off. So if I, I can turn that to say none and back to 36. Oops, 36. So we've got this brown one here. And then when I turn this to alternating, that's gonna just turn off. So 
if we're on the viewport. So that just turned off there, which means it looks like it's gone narrower. It hasn't gone narrower. It's just there's a gap at the end that isn't being created. So if you want an odd number, if you want to utilize that full width, just something to note. Okay, back on the ring. So here we, we want an even number if we're using alternating gap type. And let's turn that to a fixed angle and we can increase that angle if we want to, or we can decrease it, set that to none. And we can just hit play and you can play with the settings. Now, of course, this bar size is being set by a noise, which will just be different for every uh, single rectangle that's being created here. However, if you want to set this from say a spreadsheet or an array or something like that, then you can very easily do that. And you would just connect that in the normal way of importing a spreadsheet and then hooking that up to the bar size and then the count to the number of things in your spreadsheet. And then that would give you a pie chart basically. So we can fake this with say an array. Let's create a value array and we'll give ourselves four values. We'll say 200, 100, 30, 30. And then if we plug those into the sizes, let's give ourselves four chunks in our, in our pie chart. And then we'll get this value array and we'll plug it into bar size here. And you see how we've got these um, different values in here. Now, of course, this adds up to 360, but if I was to increase the values here, notice how everything's normalizing. So we're not wrapping around. This means you can put in any number of values and you won't kind of spill over the 360 degrees. We'll normalize everything for you and make sure that it fits in. And then finally, you can obviously, you can change the inner radius. If you change this to zero, you get yourself a pie chart. You can also change the start angle or end angle if you want to make this half. It's just so that's 180 degrees. Or you can animate this out if you want to. And that's it. That's the rectangle pattern shape.